I'm not sure I would have kept going as an entrepreneur in my 20s the way I've kept going at this age because you just tap into resilience and you really, I think, as women start to come into your own in your 40s. And so I'm here to say aging is a privilege. It really is. I'm Amy Jo Martin. Welcome to the Why Not Now show. thing you've been thinking about doing? Yeah, that one. Why not now? Have you ever actually taken the time to ask yourself, what's stopping me? Let's talk it through. This is your chance to give that idea the attention it deserves and take action. Each episode, I have a chat with a fascinating person from entrepreneurs to athletes, celebrities, my parents, rocket scientists, and all walks of life. We talk through a critical time when they've asked themselves, why not now? We dissect that day or even that moment, step by step. Elaine Morrison is on the show today, and I don't know if you can hear the smile on my face, but she is one of my favorite humans. Elaine is an entrepreneur, but she has not always been an entrepreneur. In fact, this is a more recent step that she's taken. She's had so many twists and turns in her career, which we will talk about, many of which do not look anything alike, but you will hear how they're all connected, of course. And I met Elaine because she took my Renegade Brand Boot Camp program. And when she entered the program, she had just kind of relaunched or was starting to rebrand her collagen product that she has. She gets into a little bit about that, but she was in a, in a place where she had a health challenge, a pretty substantial health challenge. And so she created a solution for that challenge. And so her why is baked into this product in in every aspect, but she had never had any experience with building a product, a tangible CPG, consumer product good. And that's a big deal, what's involved to go through that process. But Elaine talks about how when she came up with this idea, this solution to a problem, she just could not get it out of her head. And that quote, I could not get it out of my head, is something I hear so often. So she'll talk about what her very first step was like and what she did to kind of go into figure it out mode because she knew nothing about this world. And her first entry into this did not end how she had imagined. It's it's a kind of crazy story, but she did it again. She took another stab at it and she did it her way. And so there's so many lessons baked into her journey. You can leapfrog a lot of things and just learn a lot from Elaine. So in this episode, it's it's wide ranging and we talk about entrepreneurship, of course, but we also talk about what Elaine has done in the past. So she has been in the financial industry. She has her series seven. She's also a Pilates instructor. <laughs> And Elaine is just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to health and products and things you can do to really manage your own well-being and optimize it. One of the things I love about Elaine and her experience in the Renegade Brand Bootcamp is we really dove into how she answers the question, what do you do? So on the surface, you know, she would say, I have a collagen product. But that's not really what she does. What she does and what she arrived at through the program and the different exercises and process we went through is that she helps women feed their beauty from within. And she has integrated her why and her story into her product to where she is her brand, right? Her product is her and her experience and her results and the problem that she's solved, and she's doing this for other people now too. 
We also talk about failure, how to really get quiet and listen to that internal GPS. We talk about moments of resilience and just getting curious, how sometimes the very first step is starting to get curious about something. So without further ado, here is my friend and fellow renegade, Elaine. How we spend our days is how we spend our lives. For me, being able to design my own day is a non-negotiable. As many of you know, I'm a bit of a time management nerd. So when I find something that allows me to be more efficient and more effective, I want to share it with everyone. So here's the scoop. I have a new tool in my productivity tool belt, and I'm a bit obsessed. It's monday.com. My team and I have never felt more organized, and I have a new sense of perceived control. My to-do list is no longer the boss of me. I feel more in control because every project, initiative, date, and task is captured and organized in one place, and my team is in the loop and involved every step of the way. With Monday.com, it's like I have a brand new operating system. There's no long list, and everything has its own home, its own deadline, its own team member that's assigned and associated, and it's color-coordinated. We all have multifaceted jobs and businesses. There are many components to my business, and each and every one of them has its own compartment. Each division is always one click away. For example, my team and I have a dedicated board for this very podcast. Did you know there are 28 steps involved in getting one podcast to air? It's the same exact process every time, and it's a system. We have the various key steps mapped out as micro tasks, and this allows for my team and I to stay in lockstep every step of the way. With Monday.com, I can zoom out and see the big picture, a roadmap view from 30,000 feet. And a moment later, I can zoom in and focus on a specific micro task within a project, within a division of the company. I could go on and on about the features that Monday.com offers, one of which is I've built my social media content calendar inside of Monday.com. I finally have one that I actually use, that I like, and it's embedded into my overall Google calendar. Another feature that I love is the Google Doc integration. You know I love a good spreadsheet. I can pull them into monday.com and edit them right there versus having 97 tabs open on my computer. If how we spend our days is how we spend our lives, then I can't think of anything more important than using the time in our days wisely. Head to monday.com if you want a free trial. And let me know on social media how it goes for you. Shoot me a DM. We can swap tips and tricks. Elaine, welcome to the Why Not Now show. I am jazzed to have you on and excited to dive in. Let's start. So can you tell me about a time when you had a big decision to make and you had to ask yourself, why not now? Yes, I had an idea that I just could not get out of my head. And so I had to decide, should I jump into the beverage industry and start a brand new category with a new beverage. Oh, wow. And how did this all start? I mean, that's a biggie. It's a biggie, especially when you don't know anything at all about the beverage space. So in um, 2013, I had been diagnosed with Hashimoto's. And then on top of that, I developed psoriasis. And so it was really a health meltdown when I had been teaching Pilates. I worked out a lot. I was eating a vegan diet. I thought I was, you know, being really healthy. And here I was, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. I had been gaining weight. Um, My hair was falling out, which was huge, which I know is such an identity for a lot of women. I was exhausted. It didn't matter if I slept 10 hours a night, I was still exhausted. So I decided to look into how I could heal this in a more holistic way, because I was given a lot of medications, I was told I might get sicker. 
And really just through my own reading and research found the correlation between uh, food and health. And so over time, I started to change my diet and eat real foods, right? I'm really passionate about just listening to your body and eating real food. So I did that. And then because I was so concerned about losing my hair, I started adding collagen to my diet, which collagen is an animal protein. It's We all have it within us. But as we age, we lose the ability to produce enough of it. And we also no longer eat a collagen-rich diet. So I was like, okay, cool, let me try this. And so I added collagen in. And then within about four to six months, my hairstylist was like, this is really interesting. You have all this baby hair growth coming in. And so I just decided to stick with that and really found the transformation in my hair, my skin, and my nails. About a year after I changed my diet, I then went to work for a man that I was dating who was a stockbroker. And, you know, it was what I needed because I had become, I realized in my, I was in my mid forties and I had just gotten really stuck. I was teaching Pilates. I felt sort of uninspired. And so here I landed in this stock brokerage, but I had to, I had to get my securities licenses, which are your series seven and series 66, which allows you to trade stocks and bonds and give advice on that. And so it was a huge, huge, huge mountain for me to climb. And I proved to myself that I could pass those tests. And I proved to all the, sorry, older men who sort of were very skeptical about this Pilates instructor coming to work and passing these rigorous exams. So I think in the scope of my entrepreneurial journey, it was really important that I had passed those tests because I proved to myself that you can do hard things. So anyways, the relationship didn't last and I ended up being let go because we were no longer in a relationship. So I did land another job at another brokerage but it was like a 10 week lag time to go through all the background checking that they do for you to work in a stock brokerage. So in that moment, I had all this time of like, wow, collagen has been so transformative. And I just started doing some research and I kept having as, you know, Susie Batiste talks a lot about this, having alive ideas. And this idea just wouldn't go away of creating a collagen water. And so in that 10 weeks of sitting around waiting to be background checked, I just started doing all this research and I just couldn't get the idea out of my head. And so I ended up calling my best friend, Stephanie, and saying, what do I, what do, I do? Like, am I crazy? Should I pursue this? And her question was, if you don't, will you regret it? And I think that was such a pivotal moment. Oh, such a, such a good sign that a, you, that question made you stop in your tracks, it sounds like, but also whenever someone says I couldn't get this idea out of my head, that is a big indicator, right? Like that's a sign and signal that there's, there's probably something to explore more there and keep going with it. So so you and you'd never been in these industries before. I mean, it sounds like this was pure, like figure it out mode. Oh yeah. So I think I naively went into the beverage industry, and I think sometimes that's good to be a little bit naive in an industry that's so maybe set in its ways. But I also sort of didn't know really what I was getting into, and so I think. You know, entrepreneurship, we're living in an era where it's it's just so glamorized as like the cool thing, or I think a lot of people we maybe follow on social media make it look like, oh, it's just the easiest thing. And I would say entrepreneurship takes us on, on a spiritual journey that will take you so far out on a limb of discomfort. And and that's okay because that's where your growth begins. But I did hire consultants to help me because the beverage industry is very hard to navigate. And so it took a year and a half to get a finished product. So it gives me a new appreciation. Anything you see on the grocery shelves that's in a package, 
understand how much time, effort, blood, sweat, and tears goes into creating that. So true. So true. I've had optics into others who have gone down that route and it just seems extremely competitive as well. And, um, and there's a lot of supply chain management involved in shelf space and all the things. So then what's next? So this is your, your first time entrepreneur, which I think it's so important to kind of double down on and just kind of bring to the surface again, that it sounds like you got some confidence for sure when you got your series seven and series 66. So that I, you know, for listeners, if you're thinking about embarking on that entrepreneurial journey, there might be something you can do to really kind of boost your confidence ahead of time, like some sort of training, some sort of, in this case, it was completely different area, but look at how it ended up applying to your, to your kind of bravery (laughs) levels. Um, So you have this concept, you start figuring it out, then what? I mean, I know, I know your story, you know, well enough that, it it's all not all bright and shiny rainbows, but there were there was a lot of interest in the beginning, right? Like you had some big players uh, and and attention kind of reach out with this concept. This was so innovative. I did, I did. I, I like to say entrepreneurship is the highest highs and the lowest lows, and you have to be sort of emotionally ready to ride that out. And so, yes, you know, I, I opened my email one day, I was in the back of an Uber, I was on the way to New York and I'm reading my email and it's, it says the name of my company at the time was Eviva slash, and then imagine a TV show where, uh, venture capitalists, uh, give money, right. I, I, you can figure out the name of the show and I'm thinking, oh my God, like really me? And it's the producer and he's reaching out and he's like, you know, we found you on Instagram and um, we would love to talk to you. So I scheduled a call with him and was like blown away that he said to me, he's like, you basically created a category that didn't exist. And and so I, I was just absolutely like taken aback that really like you found me on Instagram and you think I created a category. It, it was kind of mind blowing experience. So, you know, that's the roller coaster of entrepreneurship, right? The ups and the, and the downs for sure. Oh my goodness. I, I got chills and I've, I've heard, it's funny, even though I know part of this story, I can't imagine that feeling. I mean, there's nothing more exhilarating. And I think the the adrenaline that comes along with innovation and doing something kind of risky, especially starting your own company and then getting that feedback loop of, oh, no, you're onto something here, like a big lever of feedback that's being, you know, thrown your way. So do you, but side note for inquiry minds, because I know I'm not the only one and I, I bet this is going through some listeners' minds. Do you have any idea of how they found you on Instagram? Were they searching for collagen products or something? Like maybe they were looking at that industry and vertical as a hot thing to find, or did they ever tell you like how they found you? So they did, I don't, for those of you who watched the show, they did a whole season where they really focused on Uh, food and beverage items. And I think it's because the food and beverage space has gotten really hot in the last few years. And so there's a lot of venture capital money that's pouring into that industry. And so I know, you know, I certainly had people finding me on Instagram, LinkedIn, all different places because collagen became such and still is um, such a trending supplement and very much tied into the wellness and beauty space. And so I know that I had people finding me probably through like the hashtag collagen, just through, you know, we all go down the, the, the rabbit hole of searching. So I think that's um, how they found me. I also, I should say, Amy Jo, I was diving into this industry that I knew absolutely nothing about. And then my consultant was like, oh, you know what? You should apply to pitch at BevNet Live, which is a beverage industry trade show. And the introvert in me was like, you've got to be kidding. 
but I got accepted to pitch. And so here I was, I didn't even have a product yet. And I pitched at BevNet Live. So that's, you know, for better or for worse on YouTube. And so if you, if you Google, I think that also came up. So that's, that's another thing. That was another high. Oh, crazy. Okay. So you're just riding these waves and you didn't end up going on that infamous TV show, right? So how did you decide not to, not that it's, you know, this part of the story is just one piece, but for again, inquiring minds, not many people probably decline. <laughs> I was concerned because I, I, so I did a friends and family raise, right? So I raised $150,000 for my company. So I, I already had investors. And then when I talked to the producer f- from this TV show, and you do a 40 page application, by the way, as well as a pitch video. They felt like my my revenue wasn't strong enough. And so while it's great to have all the attention from that show, you have to sort of manage that, right? Because if you get on the show and even if you get declined, you get all this publicity. It, it just, I weighed it out and they felt like I should probably defer to the following season because hopefully I would have more revenue. Gosh, this story, it could be a movie. It really, it can be. Keep, keep taking us. Cause I know, I think I know where you're headed next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, along with the attention, I got, um, a lot of attention in, in the trade magazines and trade publications all related to beverage. And so here in my email inbox one day from BevNet Live, they're talking about collagen. And I'm like, Ooh, this is so cool. Wow. What are they saying? So I open it up and literally Amy Joe, I about fell off my chair because here's this photo and it's my product and it's featured with bulletproof and vital proteins. And I'm thinking, Oh my God, I had no idea this article was being written or published or anything. And it was talking about, you know, the growth in the category of collagen And here I was like, wow, this is so cool that I'm being mentioned alongside these really big players. But the only problem is that the founder of Vital Proteins then ordered the product off my website. And I had this overwhelming sinking feeling of like, oh my God, is this about to happen? And then a few weeks later came an order from a flavor house and I thought, oh my God, because the flavor house is who they create formulas. And I just thought, oh my God, here I've been trying so hard. I've been learning every facet. I'm a one woman show. I'm figuring out the trucking industry. I'm figuring out Amazon. I'm figuring out Thrive Market, all the logistics. And then I thought to myself, I'm, I'm about, I'm about to get copied and I I don't have the money to compete. Beverage takes an incredible amount of money to compete. Oh, what a, what a feeling. And you were correct, right? You were pretty much what, what you thought was happening did. And it's, I don't know if it's even painful, painful for you to tell this story, but I get pissed and then sad. And then I'm like, yeah, let's go pivot. And so what, so what happened? So you were basically, it was, that was it. And you had a big kind of heavy hitter come in and, and take the idea. Is that, is that how you'd say it? Yeah. I mean, look, this, this happens all day, every day in every industry, right? Because, you know, recipes are not patentable. You can patent a recipe, you can patent a process. So it was bound to happen sooner or later. Did they do it to push me out? Did they do it because they got a $19 million investment? I'll never know. But that the reality was the reality. And I had this just sinking feeling, right? I I had exhibited at Expo West and then to go back the next year and to see their massive splash being made. And I just, it was hard. I won't lie. I wanted to quit. I felt like a failure. I wanted to give up. I felt like I had disappointed my investors. I, I really beat myself up pretty well for quite a while about it. 
Oh, and you bring up such a good point that there really was nothing officially, you know, rule breaking around, around this, right? Like this was this was not illegal. I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong. This is kind of the, I mean, the way this is what we hear about when we watch that one TV show. A lot of people coming in and and coming in bigger with more money and kind of swallowing up other smaller, scrappier you know, one man show type of one woman show type of startup. So I can't imagine the the feeling because I know what it's like when you put your entire being and sweat equity and heart into your company and, and you're just I mean and then you're willing to be brave enough to go out on that limb of discomfort, like you said. How long did you, you know, you said you were really pretty down for a while. How long was that? Was, And what did it look like? What was the interim? Did you pause? Were you scurrying, trying to pivot, hiding in your bedroom, which I'm sure there's a phase of that too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all the things. So what happened was when you, when you manufacture a beverage, you know, the, the quantities are pretty large right? Again, my naivete. So I owned a lot of pallets, put it in perspective. I owned two tractor trailer loads of inventory, right? And so I had a lot of inventory and I had to figure out how to get rid of it. And that put me in such a state of panic because it was costing me a thousand dollars a month to warehouse it. And I was trying to sell it off it had an expiration date on it. And I literally was calling everywhere of like trying to find ways that I could sell it. So I called, I get approached on LinkedIn by everybody trying to offer me their consulting services. And I just, there was something about this guy that had reached out to me and I talked to him and I told him my situation. He was like, Hey, call up TJ Maxx. So I did. And I got on the phone with the buyer. She's like, yes, we want to take it for um, home goods. And so she wrote me a purchase order. And so she took half my inventory and I was able to make the money back. So it was like, okay, now I've got, I still had a balance of inventory that I had to get rid of. And Amy Jo, I was like calling, emailing every store I could think of. And then I was on the phone with my best friend, Marlo. And I was like, hon, I'm literally freaking out. What am I going to do? And she's like, hey, my preschool class just told me to go shopping at this place called Grocery Outlet. Why don't you figure them out? I literally was Googling it while I was on the phone with her. I emailed the buyer in 24 hours. I had a response, talked to the correct buyer. She wrote me a purchase order for the balance of it. And I shipped it out like five days before Christmas. And it felt like the biggest Christmas gift ever to be able to get out from under that physical inventory. But then that's also, I believe, the same time of when I found out about you and the Renegade Brand Boot Camp by following Danica. And so there was a real synergy there of like, okay, well, let me, let me go find out who this woman is. Oh, I got to love Danica Brysha, who's also been on the show. So if you're listening and you haven't heard of her or listened, please take a glimpse back at her story. It's incredible. And I, I I, remember looking, I got a DM from you, and which is where most leads come in for <laughs> the boot camp is through Instagram. And just being so impressed with your presence and your content on Instagram, which hence clearly it converted well back when you were you know, being courted with the, from the TV producer. And then of, of course we get on the phone and you start sharing your story. And would you say Elaine, that this was, I have so many questions, but this was like a level set. So the universe is like, all right, let's clear the slate, got rid of the inventory at this point where your investors still on board with whatever was going to come next. Were, were you in, in close discussions with them about even what to do before you decided to just try and shed this 
concept and inventory? Like at, at any point, was there a, hey, maybe we give give this a go and and see how far we can go with the beverage? Or did you instantly know when you saw Vital Proteins kind of get after it that you were you were not wanting to pursue it? Like how did that decision get made? You know, there were several decisions. So I've had a mentor in my life who he's been incredible and he He's been in the CPG space and the beverage space for most of his career. And so it was, I mean, I've, I had so many conversations with him. Should I keep going? Should I not keep going without getting way down into the weeds of formulating a beverage? It, there's a, it's challenging to formulate a beverage with protein in it. Um, I'll just leave it at that. So a lot of discussions with him. You know, I have four investors. Three of them are the absolute dearest friends of mine who, I mean, literally just came forward. I didn't ask them for money. They just said, we believe in you and we want to support you, which I mean, Amy, Joe, just to have that level of support from your friends who my friends really are my family. Um, and then I have one investor who heard me pitch at BevNet Live. He spent a career in, in the beverage industry. And I have to say, they have stayed out of my hair, which that's the kind of investors you want. They stay quiet. The one who has experience in the beverage space, I certainly had conversations with him about it, but they ultimately have really left it to me to decide. And so what happened when I got to that point of just getting rid of that expiring inventory was... I felt so defeated and like just such a failure. And I had this woman say to me, but you haven't failed. You created a product. You got it on shelf. You got it into 30 stores in LA. You got it on thrivemarket.com. You got it on Amazon. You got all this attention for it. And furthermore, you're not broke. You're not in debt. So you're not done. And that was like, a huge, huge moment for me. So my reason to keep going, honestly, is if I go out of business, I don't have the money to pay back my investors. And I, in my heart of heart, like my friends are not multi, multi, multi millionaires. And I thought if I lose their money and I, if I go down, I take them down with me. And I just, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. And, and literally is the timing of, of when I met you and I sent you that DM. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. All right, everyone, I've got an announcement. As of today, we are officially enrolling for the 2021 Renegade Accelerator Program, formerly called the Renegade Brand Bootcamp. Okay, so who is this program for? What is it? The Renegade Accelerator is for driven female leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs ready to massively increase their impact and income. The program is for like-minded, like-hearted women all over the globe. The experience is intimate, live, real-time, virtual, and it's led by me. Our curriculum is equal parts education, practical education, collaboration, and accountability. In the accelerator, you'll learn directly from me, and I share everything I've learned over the past 20 years in business. We meet in real time to learn, discuss, and grow together. This is high touch. I'll teach you a variety of things from personal branding to the business side of public speaking, podcasting, publishing, marketing partnerships, how to productize your intellectual property, and we even talk about investing. I teach you all about the different types of investing in order to build your personal wealth. You will also learn the renegade mentality, which is a key ingredient in your success to generate real results. This program is the career love of my life because I get to curate a mosaic of driven, like-minded, like-hearted women who come together to lift each other and themselves up to the next level. After the Renegade Accelerator, you become a member of my top-level alumni community. This group of unmatched women who are making a positive impact is 
personally curated by me, the relationship building and networking opportunities are endless. And this collective of real valuable connections will be something that you have forever. If you're at the point where you are ready to take action and accelerate, head to renegadeaccelerator.com. You can sign up for more information where I will guide you in determining if the program and the timing is right for you. If not you, then who? And if not now, then when? Why not now? Head to renegadeaccelerator.com. Oh, wow. That's, that's so... It's so rad that you had that woman come into your life and say, but you haven't failed. And she's so right. Most people in that situation that early in a startup wouldn't have any cash left, right? I mean, the fact that you had made all of those huge steps and wins of placing it, Thrive Market, Amazon, 30 plus stores in LA, like... Your hustle muscle um, at that point was probably pretty strong too. And and you had some wins. So we talked and I remember how hesitant you were when I was asking you about your story. Like, why did you create this? And, and of course you share it with me. And it just seemed like there was a little, not a little, probably a little more than a little resistance in sharing the why, being out in front. And that's not really your, your thing <laughs> to be the face of the brand per se. Right. So we really worked on that and you, you did, you got right back on the horse in a different way. Yeah. I, I would love to hear kind of from your take, what it was like when you decided to shift course, but still keep going and uh, apply those lessons, integrate those lessons, and then also take on a whole new approach of, building in your your who and your why, which is what we do, especially in the program. And I'll never forget this one situation, uh, which I'll share in a minute. But that whole mindset, how did you navigate that? So, you know, you had just gone through one thing and then kind of deciding what to do next. Right. So, you know, I I started to get curious and and go back to some of the people who had purchased the beverage from me. And What I found out was that ultimately with a supplement like collagen, people wanted to be able to control how they used it, how they incorporated it into their diet. And so I started to realize, right, think how many beverages you you drank in a day, like a finished product that you would purchase. And I thought, you know... I don't want to keep going with a collagen beverage, right? If you go to any grocery store, you see how crowded the refrigerated beverage section is. And so I thought, okay, let me go into packs, right? Because again, I literally asked for as much information as I could. I was even DMing influencers that use collagen. And I was like, hi, you don't know me. Can you answer these like five questions, right? And I just sat here one day and like wrote it all out and figured out, okay, people want convenience, number one. So I thought, okay, I can pivot. I can go into powdered collagen. But then the other huge dilemma when I met you was I had spent over two years, quite a bit of money with two different patent attorneys, intellectual property attorneys who had been telling me, oh yeah, you can trademark the same Eviva. And then I remember I literally melted down one day when I found out from my attorney. He's like, well, it's really not possible, but I can keep trying to do this, that, and the other. And I thought, how have I been so misled for so long about this? So that's when I met you was the naming issue. And again, when you get quiet and you start listening to the messages that are being sent to you, Everyone in my life, people who didn't even know each other were saying, well, why wouldn't you use your own name? Oh my God. The introvert in me was like, that seems like a huge step. (laughs) (laughs) You were allergic at first, innovation allergies, as I like to call them, but, but being, putting yourself out there. Right. And it was, I remember our conversation and if you had gone, hadn't gone through everything you had already, and there were these moments, it seems like along your path, Elaine, where it was 
a confidence booster, even though maybe it felt at the time as like, okay, this didn't work out as planned, but look at what you were able to do in that scrappiness. And I keep going back to that series 70 and mm-hmm. series 66, getting, getting the, <laughs> that confidence, like momentum of like, okay, I can do this. Well, then I could probably do this too. I could probably do this. And they're scrappy. You're DMing influencers, asking them for insight, going to people who've purchased it and asking for feedback and just extremely resourceful. Uh, and I could see the build where you started warming up to the idea, but I'll never forget when, um, you know, we're, we're at, we're in Dallas together with the rest of your class for the Renegade boot camp, And we go through this process of the, what do you do as we're, you know, starting to identify what your brand essence is. And you went from the literal what to the why and the who, and it gives me goosebumps thinking about it now because, Everyone in the room was just like, boom, she did it. Like, that's that's how it's done, evidently. <laughs> Can you talk us through kind of how that went and what it, what it felt like? And I mean, you, you nailed that pretty quickly, too. Sometimes it's life work for people to navigate that and distill down their their brand essence. But yeah, can you talk that through a little bit? I, I clearly remember the moment, right? We were gathered around um, Susie's beautiful dining room table in her church. And you had been leading us through all these different exercises um, to really drill down to, you know, what what is it that you do, right? And I remember looking at you and saying, I help women feed their beauty from within, and it just like washed over you and you were like, yes, that's, that's it. Like, that's it. Oh, yes. And everybody had brand essence FOMO. They're like, I want to figure mine out right this second too. But it's, it was this, you, you, it was in you, right? <laughs> I mean, talk about with, from within. So much of it goes back to your personal story and how you navigated something that then you wanted to share with other people to help them and be of service really. And so imagine, you know, as you're listening to this, um, for listeners right now, if someone, you know, you ask someone, what what do you do? And they say, Oh, I've got a college and beverage company or just even a college and powder company. It's like, okay. Versus if you ask someone, what do you do? And they say, I help women feed their beauty from within. You kind of, usually you'll get a head tilt and you'll be like, oh, okay, how do you do that? Tell me more. And all of a sudden there's, there's a connection and conversation that's going to transcend a beverage or a powder, right? And, and so how has that worked for you? What's happened since? So that was a pivotal moment, but then, but then what? How do you apply that? It's really evolved since then. I guess it's been, I lose track of time. I think it's been a year, right? A little over a year, which seems hard to believe because I feel like I've known you for so long. But yeah, you know, it's just because of my own illness and healing my body through food and nutrition. I mean, I've always had a passion for that, right? I've I've taught Pilates for the last 14 years. I continue to teach Pilates, even trying to run businesses. I still work um, teaching Pilates. So it's just a passion for making, I guess, food and exercise really accessible, right? We live in a a diet and beauty culture that wants to make you feel like you've got to go to all these extreme measures when I'm here to say you don't eat real food. And people always want to know what diet should you follow? Well, diet, follow the, the diet that makes you feel good, you know? And then it's also morphed into this narrative around aging, right? I, I'm turning 51 next week and you know, we live in a culture that really shames women around aging. And I think that really keeps women separated from themselves. And I'm finding it so interesting, right, that the Super Bowl, um, it was JLo and Shakira performing and like Google blew up from everyone searching their age. And it's like, well, yeah, you, 
you can look good, you can feel good. And more than that, you can feel empowered as a woman. And I really believe what I've found, like my 40s have been challenging, but they've been full of so much personal growth. And I'm not sure I would have kept going as an entrepreneur in my 20s the way I've kept going at this age, because you just tap into resilience and you really, I think, as women start to come into your own in your 40s. And so I'm here to say aging is a privilege. It really is. Oh, I'm so happy that that we got here, too, because this is such a, um, I mean, talk about transcending a, a certain topic or a certain vertical and getting into a discussion that is universal, but also extremely important. You have so much to say as a thought leader around age and this concept that it is a privilege and it is and the narrative around that. And it's another example of how it's so much easier and much more enjoyable and impactful to connect over that discussion versus sometimes the what and the the literal. And so it's, yeah, it's been really, really interesting to see where you've navigated this path that you're on and you're, you're creating it as you go. And it's, it's very timely too. I think that's, that's one of the things that I keep, it's like surfacing. I think this topic around age is, is really bubbling. And, and like you said, the, the Googling of the age for Shakira and JLo, what an interesting kind of just statement that is, how informative it is of, of where we are as a society about the importance of that number that we're still, we're still putting on. As you, as you kind of look at where things are now, what's one lesson you find yourself learning over and over, Elaine? Oh my goodness. You know, you have to just keep forging ahead. You have to keep trying I think for me, I think this probably applies to a lot of women. I It's very foreign to me to ask for help, but I think we live in an age where people want to be helpful. And so I think, you know, seek out mentors, seek out people who know more than you do. Go on LinkedIn. I find nine times out of 10, people are willing to give you advice if you ask for it. But also, I think as an entrepreneur, you always have to come back to your own inner knowing, right? And your own sense of what should I do, right? Even though I've had consultants, even though I have a mentor who he has a ton of experience in the business, always come back to what is your inner voice saying to you? And I think as women, as entrepreneurs, that in a lot of ways gives us a leg up, right? Because intuition is our superpower as women. If we will just get quiet and drop down into that, right? We live in a noisy world where we can often override the intuition. I know you've talked about this or say, oh, no, no, that expert or that person, they know more than I do. No, no, no. Drop down into what is that inner voice saying? Oh, so true. So absolutely true. And it's data, right? Our, our inner voice is actually science and informative. It's a, if that GPS uh, is optimized and we actually use it, it, it does get better and better and sharper and sharper. And it's fascinating. I had to learn the hard way on that one for sure. <laughs> if you were to share a couple of things you do to keep the volume up on that inner voice and really, you know, honor it so it keeps showing up for you too. What would you say those things are? Like, How do you access it? I mean, the Pilates instructor in me would, you know, find some quiet time to maybe that's just, you know, part of, I should say part of how I feel like I was able to pass the series seven exam, which is 250 questions spread out over six hours in a testing center. The best piece of advice I was given was after every 10 questions, close your eyes and take three cleansing breaths, right? It sounds so simple, but breathe. We live in a culture and I can tell you from my 
Pilates background is most people don't breathe all the way down into your belly, right? Let your belly expand. It's okay. You know, breathe and journaling. If journaling helps you, like sometimes writing things out helps you to get clear on things. Or like for me, often bouncing it off one of my best girlfriends, you know, someone who I really trust to just hold space for me and let me just talk through something. Oh my gosh. That's such a good, a, a counterintuitive yet so <sighs> relevant and, and just kind of the juxtaposition. I can just see, you know, you in this intense situation, 250 questions in front of you, six hours, and you're practicing breath work strategically. <laughs> um, so smart yet and innovative, two things that don't probably usually go together with that situation and tactical and, and helpful. I think about, I took the GMAT after my undergrad because I thought I wanted to get my MBA. And I did a Princeton review class where if any, I don't even know if they are still doing them, but you know, it's kind of like a prep class and they should be teaching that, I think. And maybe they are now, but they didn't uh, in the 90s. Uh, or actually, I guess it was early 2000s. But it's anything like those intense, long situation or situations where you're spending a focused amount of time on something. You're so right. We aren't really taught to stop and, and breathe. And I've heard you say you got quiet a few times as we've been chatting where critical moments and you've referred to... Yep. And I got quiet. So helpful. Oh my goodness. So what is one thing you would tell your younger self? Wow. You know, my younger self didn't do and try a lot of things because she was afraid of failure, right? That's such a common theme, I think, for so many of us. And I, I look back and I think, gosh, you know, in my 20s, I wish I had taken more risks. I wish I had tried more industries. I mean, obviously now we live in a different world. Like I went to college when the internet didn't exist. So I would say now, like there's so much access to information. I tell my nieces and nephews all the time, like you can learn about anything and everything. So I think always try new things, take risks. And most of all, failure is your teacher, right? Failure is not a negative. And I wish I had known that when I was younger. Failure is a stepping stone to the next thing. And that's exactly how you've, you've used it. It's, um, it's been, I don't, it's been an honor to just even witness this portion of your journey and, to help guide here and there when I can. And it, yeah, I have so much respect for your resilience and what you said about kind of age affords resilience. And, and it's so true. Um, what a privilege to, to have more resilience in your back pocket. Like that's not a bad thing at all. And, and you've practiced that, you know, accessing that. So, I can't thank you enough, Elaine, for joining me today, joining us and sharing your time and wisdom, but also just allowing me to be on this ride with you. And for everyone who's listening and they want to follow along, where should they go to connect with you? Um, so you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Elaine Wellness. Um, you can come to my website, elainewellness.com. I will make a code for all your wonderful listeners. So it'll be Amy Joe, and that'll give you 15% off on my website. Um, and DM me. I, I manage all my own social media for, for better or for worse. I, I love to talk to people. So, you know, DM me or email me. I would I would love to be in touch with any of your audience. And I would just say, Amy Jo, you have been such an incredible blessing in my life. You're just a spectacular woman. I, I just admire you so much. And I, I thank you for your friendship. 
Oh, you're making me blush over here. Thank you. I echo the sentiment 100%. And I do have to share. So as someone who had never, you know, done the collagen thing at all, just kind of as a last little final note here and, and plug, genuine plug, it has zero taste, right? So I've started using it and um, and I've gotten a lot of compliments on my hair lately, by the way. Um, not that that's the only upside, but it's, I, I was fascinated. It's your product and, and just, it's beautiful too. The packaging's amazing, but thank you um, for creating that and helping me feed my beauty from within Elaine. I adore you. <laughs> everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. Hit me up on social media to let me know what you think. I'm at Amy Jo Martin on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I want to hear your why not now moments so I can share them on the show. Just send me a note to why not now at amyjomartin.com. For show notes and other offers, you can visit amyjomartin.com forward slash why not now. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email newsletter for exclusive content and announcements. A big thanks to Rock Salt Music for all of the tunes by the talented John Coggins. And of course, a hat tip to Richard Gruer for editing and producing the show. I'll see you next time. And until then, why not now? Mm-hmm.